In this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the area of a surface. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to find the area of the part of the surface z equals xy that lies inside the cylinder with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now as a reminder, I've written the formula that we're going to be using to find the area of the surface. So this formula is for the area, A, of the surface S. And the first thing we need to realize is that this equation involves partial derivatives of z with respect to x and y. We've been given an equation for z, so what we can do is take partial derivatives of this equation z, so partial derivative of z with respect to x, and the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So taking the partial derivative with respect to x, we're going to treat y as a constant, which means that this y variable acts like a constant coefficient in front of x right here. The derivative, therefore, is just y. And the partial derivative of z with respect to y, treating x as a constant, x is that constant coefficient, and the partial derivative is just x. So we have these two partial derivatives, and we'll be able to plug those in here for partial derivative of z with respect to x and with respect to y. One thing we're going to need to do, though, is convert this double integral into polar coordinates. Obviously, we're looking for the part of this surface that lies inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, if we look at three-dimensional coordinate space here, like this, where we have the positive direction of the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1 is just this circular equation around the z-axis. So we have the base of this cylinder, and this cylinder is just vertical and wraps around the z-axis like this. So we have this cylinder here, and because we have this one on the right-hand side, we know that the radius of the cylinder right here is equal to 1. We also know by looking at the equation z equals xy that that equation represents a plane. So this plane is going to intersect the cylinder somewhere, and no matter which way it's tilted or not tilted, it's going to intersect the cylinder in some circle like this. So we're going to have, let's say, maybe the intersection like this, and this is going to be our surface, and we're going to be looking for the area of this surface. So what we can do is redefine this whole thing in terms of polar coordinates because we just have a circle here around the z-axis. Because polar coordinates involve the variables r and theta, we're going to need to define the intervals for r and theta. We know that r is the radius in polar coordinates, and we've already said that the radius of this circle is going to be equal to 1, right? We know that because we have this 1 here. So we know r has to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1 in order to be inside this cylinder. We also know that theta is going to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi because we're dealing with the entire circle around the z-axis, right? The angle when theta is equal to 0 starts here in the positive direction of the x-axis and then moves around the circle like this until we get back to 2 pi. We're dealing with the whole thing. So theta is going to be anywhere between 0 and 2 pi. So let's start plugging some things into our formula. We're going to have the area of the surface S is equal to this double integral of the square root of 1 plus partial derivative of z with respect to x. Well, we know that that's equal to y, so we're going to get y and then square it here, so we're going to get plus y squared. The partial derivative of z with respect to y we know is x, so we're going to get plus x squared like this. And then we're going to have dA out here. Now, if we simplify this, remember that when we're converting to polar coordinates, we have three conversion formulas. We know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We know that x equals r cosine theta. And we know that y equals r sine theta. We can use those three conversion formulas. In this case, we're only going to need the first one. Notice here we have x squared plus y squared inside our square root. We can go ahead and substitute and call that r squared. So we're going to say the double integral of the square root of 1 plus r squared. So we've converted the value inside of our integral to polar coordinates. When we convert dA to polar coordinates, we always want to substitute r dr d theta in that order. We have to add this extra r variable here, and we have dr and d theta. With this dr and d theta, that tells us in which order we want to put our limits of integration. Because dr is on the inside, we want our interval for r on the inside integral. So we said r was between 0 and 1, so we're going to say 0 and 1. 
Then on the outside, we have d theta. So we're going to take our interval for theta and put that on the outside. So 0 to 2 pi. And now you can see we have everything in terms of r and theta, so we can go ahead and evaluate this integral. We need to know that we're going to use u substitution to evaluate the integral. We can see we have an r squared value and an r to the first power value. Because those are one degree apart, this one's a second degree and this one's a first degree variable, there's a good chance that if we include r squared in our u value, that when we take the derivative, we'll get something that will be able to hopefully cancel out this r. So we're going to set u equal to 1 plus r squared, 1 plus r squared. We're going to take the derivative of that to get du. The 1 will go away because the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of r squared is 2r, and then we have to add to that dr because we took the derivative with respect to r. Now what we want to do is solve for dr, but in this case, notice we have r dr inside of our integral, and we have r dr here. So if we just divide both sides by 2, we get r dr is equal to du over 2, and now we can go ahead and substitute du over 2 directly for r dr. So our integral area of the surface s is going to become the integral 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 1 of the square root of u, r dr we're going to replace with du over 2, du over 2, and then d theta. Because we have this 2 in the denominator here, that's just a constant and everything's multiplied together, we can go ahead and pull that out in front of the integral. So we're going to get area of the surface is equal to 1 half times the integral 0 to 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 of square root of u, which is the same as u to the 1 half du d theta. Now when we take the integral of u to the 1 half, we just add 1 to the exponent, so 1 half plus 1 is going to give us 3 halves, so u to the 3 halves. And then we want to divide this by the new exponent, so we're going to take this whole thing and divide it by 3 halves. That's the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds, so we end up here with 2 thirds, and now that we've taken the integral, we can say we're going to be evaluating this on the interval 0 to 1. But remember, the interval 0 to 1 corresponds to r, right? We said r was between 0 and 1, and we have u here. So we want to make sure we write r equals 0 and r equals 1, because we can't evaluate on this interval until we back substitute for r, since the limits of integration correspond to r and not u. So the d theta stays. We haven't integrated with respect to theta yet. We haven't integrated with respect to theta, so this is going to stay, and we have our 1 half. We can go ahead and pull the 2 thirds out in front of our integral because it's just a constant coefficient and everything inside here is multiplied together. So pulling that out, we're going to get the 2 from the numerator and denominator to cancel with one another and we're just going to be left with 1 third. So we're going to have equals 1 third times the integral from 0 to 2 pi and we can also go ahead and back substitute for r. So we said u is equal to 1 plus r squared, so we get 1 plus r squared raised to the 3 halves power, and we're going to be evaluating over the interval 0 to 1. We can drop the r equals because now our limits of integration here correspond with the variable r that we have inside, so d theta. So we're going to get 1 third times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, when we plug in the upper limit of integration 1, we'll get 1 squared, which is 1, plus 1 is 2, and then 2 raised to the 3 halves power. Remember. 2 raised to the 3 halves power is the same thing as 2 raised to the 1 half power and then raised to the third because 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. So 2 to the 1 half we know is the square root of 2, so we have the square root of 2 cubed. We're going to get square root of 2, square root of 2, square root of 2, that's what that simplifies to. And we can combine two of these, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, so we end up with 2 square root of 2 when we plug in 1. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0, so we'll get 0 squared is 0, plus 1 is 1, 1 raised to the 3 halves power is just 1, and then we have d theta. Now that we've dealt with all the r's, we can integrate with respect to theta, so we're going to get area of the surface s is equal to 1 third out in front, 
And then the integral of 2 root 2 with respect to theta is 2 root 2 times theta. And the integral of negative 1 with respect to theta is negative theta. So that's going to be our integral, and we're going to evaluate that over 0 to 2 pi. So when we simplify here, when we evaluate over the interval, we'll plug in 2 pi first. And so when we do that, we're going to get 4 pi root 2 minus 2 pi. And then we're going to subtract from this whatever we get when we plug in 0. Well, of course, that'll just give us a 0 and a minus 0. So no need there to plug in 0. This is all we have. And when we simplify here, all we want to do is pull out a 2 pi to go with this 1 third here. So we'll get 2 pi over 3. We can factor out a 2 pi. And all we're left with is 2 root 2 minus 1. And this is our final answer, which is the value of the area of the surface S when the surface S is the part of Z equals XY that lies inside the cylinder with this equation.